Beer in Canada, Wikipedia article audio Beer in Canada was introduced by European settlers in the 17th century. The first commercial brewery was La Brasseries du Roy started by New France Intendant Jean Talon, in Qua Copyright Beck City in 1668. Many commercial brewers thrived until Prohibition in Canada. The provincial and federal government's attempt to eliminate intoxicating beverages led to the closing of nearly three-quarters of breweries between 1878 and 1928. It was only in the second half of the 20th century that a significant number of new breweries opened up. The Canadian beer industry now plays an important role in Canadian identity though globalization of the brewing industry has seen the major players in Canada acquired by, or merged with, foreign companies, notably its three largest beer producers, Labatt, Malson, and Sleeman. The result is that Moosehead, with an estimated 3.8% share of the domestic market in 2016, has become the largest fully Canadian-owned brewer. Beer sales have been sluggish overall in volume and in growth in industry revenue as other beverages have increased in popularity. Growth in revenue for beer makers averaged 1.3% per year during 2011-2016, the estimated annual growth over the subsequent five years is only 0.4% per annum. Nonetheless, the number of licensed breweries in Canada increased from 310 in 2010 to 640 in 2015. Many of these are small operations since there were only 30 huge breweries in 2015. Popularity History that is understandable since craft brewing is a very fast-growing segment both in terms of the number of producers and the volume sold. This is probably because of its appeal to a wider demographic than the traditional mass-market beers which primarily target young males. According to one expert, the craft industry is attracting new consumers from different segments who would normally drink different things. In other words, non-jock men and young women, who traditionally haven a Euro trademark tea been courted by beer marketers. This makes it understandable that the major Canadian brewers have been acquiring small, local breweries. According to writer Stephen Beaumont beer is an important aspect of the stereotypical Canadian. Along with back bacon, winter, and hockey, Beer practically defines Canada, he wrote. Beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage in Canada, in terms of both volume and dollar value. On the other hand, the increase in sales has been minimal according to a Statistics Canada March 2015 report. The volume of beer sold increased by only 1.7% per year in the previous decade. Of that, domestic beer accounted for 1.1% while imports made up the balance. In terms of market share in dollar value, beer's share dropped from 47.9% to 42% in 10 years, mostly due to the increasing popularity of wine. Imported beer sales, in volume, have grown significantly increasing at an annual average rate of 6.0% between 2004 and 2014. The top-selling style of beer in Canada, by far, is the pale lager. This type is also called North American style lager in 2016. The best-selling brand was Budweiser with its products manufactured in Canada. Beer was first introduced to Canada by European settlers in the 17th century, as Canada had an ideal climate for making beer before refrigeration was introduced. The first commercial brewery was built by Louis Prudhomme in Montreal in 1650, 
followed by a larger brewery built by Jean Talon in Quebec City, in the year 1668. The numerous British soldiers in Canada in the 17th and 18th century was a benefit to breweries since the troops were each entitled to six pints of beer per day. Most preferred ales and other heavy beers, not lager. During those centuries and into the 19th, a number of commercial brewers thrived, including some that became the staple of the Canadian industry. John Malson founded a brewery in Montreal in 1786, Alexander Keith in Halifax in 1820, Thomas Carling in London in 1840, John Kinder Labatt in 1847, also in London, Susanna Olland in Halifax in 1867, and Eugene O'Keefe in Toronto in 1891. The very first patent to be issued by the Canadian government on July 6, 1842, was to 1 G. Riley for an improved method of brewing ale, beer, porter, and other malt liquors. Economics, Largest Companies, Foreign Ownership Prohibition in Canada did not last as long as in the U.S. and was largely over by the mid-1920s apart from Prince Edward Island, where it ran from 1901 to 1948. By comparison the Temperance Act in Ontario ran from 1916 to 1927. Surprisingly, the relatively large and powerful beer manufacturing sector, and the huge working class that purchased their products, failed to convince any of the provincial governments to reverse their stance on prohibition. Even after that era, the sale of beverage alcohol products remained heavily controlled by liquor boards and publicly owned stores in each of the provinces. Those restrictions had a similar effect, leaving very few brewers. It was only in the late 20th century that there has been a revival in craft brewers and microbreweries. Industry Consolidation Worldwide The brewing had become extremely concentrated in Canada by the 1970s, being dominated by just three companies. The revival of craft brewing dates from the early 1980s, according to Ian Couts, in his book Brew North. How Canadians Made Beer and Beer Made Canada as a Result of Disparate and Random Factors. The factors included an article in May June 1978 issue of Harrow Smith magazine by a former O'Keefe employee decrying the state of the business, the creation of the campaign for real ale in the United Kingdom, the revival of smaller brewers in the United States beginning with Anchor Brewing in 1965 the 1981 deregulation of beer prices in British Columbia by Minister Peter Hindman and the resulting price hikes by the incumbents. In June 1982, the Horseshoe Bay Brewery in West Vancouver opened, creating one of Canada's first microbreweries. The oldest surviving Canadian brewing enterprise was established by John Malson in Montreal in 1786. Canada's largest brewing companies were traditionally Labatt's and Malson. Labatt's was purchased in 1995 by the Belgian company Interbrew and Malson merged with U.S. company Coors in 2005 to create Malson Coors now the world's fifth largest brewing company. With the purchase of Sleeman Breweries, the largest remaining Canadian brewer, in 2006 by the Japanese-owned Sapporo Brewery, Canada Euro trademark S beer production has been mainly under the control of foreign multinationals. By the end of 2006, Nearly 90% of beer sales was of product brewed domestically under license from non-domestic corporations. American beers brewed under license dominate much of the market, and as of 2008 Budweiser was the top-selling brand with 13% of the market, 
followed by Coors Light with 12%. Molson Canadian and Labatt Blue, for decades the top-selling brands, now hold third and fourth place. The market in Canada for domestic beer is dominated by Labatt, Molson, and Sleeman, all foreign-owned companies. Regulations In spite of foreign control of majors, there was a 50% increase in the number of independents between 2010 and 2015. By that year, there were 640 licensed breweries in Canada. Industry statistics also indicated that in 2015, beer was the country's most popular alcoholic beverage and the products brewed in Canada held an 85% share of the domestic market. The largest Canadian-owned brewer, Moosehead Brewery, controlled about 3.8% of the Canadian market in 2016. Light Beer According to Agriculture Canada, the three major multinational companies accounted for approximately 90% of retail sales in 2012. While annual exports, primarily to the U.S. are significant, industry analysts expect exported a decline at an annualized rate of 1.6% starting in 2016, due to the increasing popularity of U.S. brewed products. As well, Canada was a net importer of beer in 2014, with imports totaling $671.2 million against exports of $215.4 million. Styles A merger between Anheuser-Busch InBev and SAB Miller closed on October 10, 2016. The new company, Anheuser-Busch InBev SA NV, is trading on the Brussels Stock Exchange as ABI.BR and as BUD on the New York Stock Exchange. SAB Miller ceased trading on global stock markets. As per the agreement with the regulators, SAB Miller sold to Molson Coors full ownership of SAB Miller, including the Miller brand portfolio. Molson Coors now owns all of Miller Coors, the latter is the U.S. business unit of Molson Coors. Indigenous and Semi-Indigenous Canadian Styles As a result, Molson Coors regained the right to make and market Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Lite in Canada. Government regulations require that all beer sold in Canada show the alcohol by volume on the label. A standard bottle of beer which makes 21.6 ml of alcohol. The percentage of alcohol is expressed in mass per volume so it means grams of alcohol per 100 ml of solution. It means that a 78.9% alcohol liquid would be pure, meaning only pure ethanol. In most nations, the labeled alcohol percentage is either the average or maximum percentage allowed. However, as of 1927, most Canadian provinces require the minimum alcohol percentage to be labeled rather than the average. This move was meant to eliminate inaccurate non-alcoholic labeling as well as fraudulent advertisement. In the U.S., Light beer sales are close to 50% of the total, while in Canada such beer constitutes under 30% of consumption. In fact, Plato Logic, a beer marketing specialist, estimated in August 2015 that such beer totals only 20% of total volume of sales but adds that this category has been growing at 2.1% annually over the past five years. Although the alcohol level is also lower, usually 4% versus 5% for regular beer, the primary appeal of light beer is the calorie count but also the light almost non-beer taste and the successful marketing campaigns. In the top 10 best-selling beers of the hundreds of brands sold by the beer store in Ontario, there are two light beers listed, Bud Light and Coors Light.
Other sources also acknowledge these two, plus Miller Lite as best sellers in many provinces. The caloric content can vary significantly from brand to brand and even in products of the same brand. Nutrition information is not available on the packaging since beer manufacturers are not required to include such data. However, some manufacturers' websites, and others for health-conscious consumers, do provide relevant data for at least for certain brands. Tall boy can, this can create confusion. For example, nutrition specifics are readily available for all Sleeman beers in 341 ml bottles on the Fat Secret website. In this brand's standard original draft there are 146 calories, 180 in the clear ale and honey brown but only 90 calories in their light beer and 80 calories for clear 2.0. The average for various brands of Canadian beer in 341 ml containers is roughly 140 to 150 calories for regular beer and approximately 100 calories for light beer. Consumers who are weight conscious may not be aware that beer can also be high in carbohydrates. The data can be even more difficult to find except for beer that is much lower than average in carbs. Data is readily available for the full Sleeman line, however. Consumers will get 12 grams of carbs in the original draft roughly comparable to the 12 to 13 grams average cited by some sources. However, Sleeman Cream Ale and Honey Brown contain 18 grams and 19 grams of carbs, respectively. This company's light beer contains only 4 grams of carbs which is lower than the 5 to 6 grams industry average cited by some sources. Their Clear 2.0 product is marketed primarily on the basis of low carbs, 2.0 grams per bottle. Though not as heavily advertised, Malson Canadian 67 also contains only 2 grams of carbs, and is even lower in calories at 67 per bottle. Spruce Beer Of course, Beer connoisseurs usually rate regular beers as preferable to the light, and especially to the ultralight, beers. For example, reviews generally consider Malson Canadian 67 to be too light in taste, without the rich beer flavor of more highly rated products. Consumers who evaluate beer on websites such as Beer Advocate and Rate Beer consider the ultra-light beers such as Malson Canadian 67 and Sleeman Clear 2.0 as refreshing at best and bland or watered down at worst. Nonetheless, consumers who prefer not to give up beer while on a diet can certainly find several options that get at least acceptable ratings especially in the moderately low-calorie-slash-carb category. For example, the winners of the light lager category in the 2016 Canadian Brewing Awards included Labatt's Bud Light, Mooseheads Cracked Canoe and Malson Coors Coors Light, who consider five criteria, aroma, appearance, flavor, mouthfeel, and overall impression when judging the beer. Ice beer In most of Canada the most popular types are macro pale lagers like Malson Canadian and Labatt Blue. In Quebec and the Maritimes, lager-like ales such as Malson Export and Alexander Keith's are also popular. Spruce beer originated in 16th century New France, initially as a method for preventing scurvy. The Huron and other First Nations groups living along the St. Lawrence were likely the first people to brew it, their recipes were later combined with the settler saw Euro trademark fermenting and yeasting practices. The primary benefit of spruce beer, or a Euro Epinetia Euro trademark was to prevent scurvy, it was used for that purpose by Jacques Cartier and his explorers when they arrived in Stadacona in what is now Quebec in 1535. 
Within a few decades of settlement, it had evolved into a formal style of beer, more commonly consumed by Canadians than any ale or lager, or indeed any kind of wine or spirit in Canada. It was still commonplace until the 1960s in Quebec but is now largely restricted to a select few microbreweries and restaurants, such as Garrison Brewery in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Both alcoholic and non-alcoholic varieties exist, although the latter is now the most common by far. Ironically, despite the immense popularity of beer in Quebec and in Canada generally, the non-alcoholic soda version has maintained a more widespread appeal. The commercial versions are alcohol-free but spruce beer is often home-brewed in bathtubs and bottled on rooftops in order to allow the sunlight to aid with natural fermentation. Although commercial production of this non-alcoholic style has grown in recent years, the main provider is still famed Cascrute restaurant Paul Potates in Montreal using a recipe dating from 1896. Notwithstanding its relative obscurity, spruce beer is an authentic Canadian style of beer, as well as one of the oldest forms of beer in North America. Cream Ale Craft Beer Regions Atlantic Provinces in addition to its unique main ingredient of spruce tips, Epinet is also distinguished from other styles of beer from its use of a top fermented yeast with no malt whatsoever, the addition of toasted bread as well as roasted grain in stages during the brewing process, for its short, in-barrel fermentation period of 24 hours, and for the use of maple syrup brown sugar, molasses, or birch syrup as flavoring agents. Epinet is also typically unhopped. Ice beer originated in Canada, though it is essentially based on the German Esbach style of beer. The first ice beer marketed in the United States was Malsen Ice which was introduced in April 1993, although the process was patented earlier by Labatt instigating the so-called ice beer wars of the 1990s. Common ice beer brands in Canada in 2017, with approximately 5.5 to 6 percenter alcohol content, include Carling Ice, Malson Keystone Ice, Bush Ice, Old Milwaukee Ice, Bricks Laker Ice and Labatt Ice. There is a Labatt Maximum Ice too, with 7.1% alcohol content. One generic process of icing beer involves lowering the temperature of a batch of beer until ice crystals form. Since alcohol has a much lower freezing point than water and doesn't form crystals, when the ice is filtered off, this creates a concoction with a higher volume ratio of alcohol to water and therefore creating a beer with a higher alcohol content by volume. The process is known as fractional freezing or freeze distillation. Labatt patented a specific method for making ice beer in 1997, 1998 and 2000 which is described as follows, a process for chill treating which is exemplified by a process for preparing a fermented malt beverage wherein brewing materials are mashed with water and the resulting mash is heated and wort separated therefrom. The wort is boiled cooled and fermented and the beer is subjected to a finishing stage, which includes aging, to produce the final beverage. The improvement comprises subjecting the beer to a cold stage comprising rapidly cooling the beer to a temperature of about its freezing point in such a manner that ice crystals are formed therein in only minimal amounts. The resulting cooled beer is then mixed for a short period of time with a beer slurry containing ice crystals, without any appreciable collateral increase in the amount of ice crystals in the resulting mixture. Finally. The so treated beer is extracted from the mixture. The company provides the following explanation for the layman during this unique process 
the temperature is reduced until fine ice crystals form in the beer. Then using an exclusive process, the crystals are removed. The result is a full-flavored balanced beer. There is a much older German process called Esbach. By cooling beer to just below freezing, you separate out a large portion of water from the alcohol, which has a lower freezing point. You then skim off the ice crystals from the brew leaving behind a beer that is twice as potent as the original. That produces a beer with 12 to 15 percenter alcohol. In North America, water would be added to lower the alcohol level. Although cream ale was an offshoot of North American light lager, this type is brewed as an ale, in accordance with individual brewers' preferences. Despite its name, a cream ale does not include lactose. One definition from the U.S. suggests that cream ale in North America is somewhat of a hybrid, fermented like an ale at warm temperatures, but then stored at cold temperatures for a period of time, much as a lager would be. The resultant brew has the unchallenging crisp characteristics of a light pale lager, but is endowed with a hint of the aromatic complexities that ales provide. Pale in color, they are generally more heavily carbonated and more heavily hopped than light lagers. In the U.S., this type can also include Kentucky Common Beer or Cream Beer, although this version is rarely brewed commercially today. The cream ale from Kilkenny in Ireland bears no resemblance to North American-made cream ales. It is similar to Guinness with a nitrogenated cream head, but with 50% less carbonation than regular beers. Quebec The most widely distributed brand in Canada is the Sleeman Cream Ale first crafted in the late 1800s by George Sleeman and possibly the first genuine iteration of Canadian cream ale. Sleeman Brewery's current product, crafted from, the original Sleeman family recipe book is described by the maker as an authentic North American style combines the easy drinking nature of a lager and the rich fruity character of an ale. Muskoka Brewery also markets a cream ale across Ontario, as do some smaller brewers. Muskoka describes its product as, with its rich amber color and inviting floral tones, a cascade hoppiness and fuller body of flavor. Naturally, craft brewers' products, especially from other provinces a euro such as Montreal's McCausland Cream Ale and Vancouver's R&B Raven Cream Alia Euro are entirely different in most aspects. Craft beer accounted for 10% of the Canadian beer market in 2015, and the craft brewery industry has been experiencing rapid growth. In 2006 there were 88 such operations in Canada but that increased to 520 by 2015. Some of these also brew cider, a fermented fruit drink. That number may be as high as it will go. The trend is that as one microbrewery closes another opens to take its place. Ontario Prairies British Columbia Another trend among craft brewers is to package at least some of their products in aluminum cans instead of traditional bottles including the large growler. For example, Ottawa Euro trademark S Beyond the Pale Brewing Co. once used only bottles, including 1 and 2 liter growlers, but the company added a canning system in 2015. If you are trying to put out a premium product, Eta Euro Trademark S better for the beer to be in cans. Eta Euro Trademark S more convenient, Eta Euro Trademark S better for the environment, it makes a lot of sense, said CEO owner Rob McIsaac. Most of their beer is now sold in cans. Camerona Euro Trademark S Brewing Company in Mississauga, Ontario also sell the majority of their beer in cans.
craft brewer Blackbridge in Saskatchewan is strongly in favour of cans, due to the lower weight and much greater resistance to light and oxygen that can reduce shelf life in addition to lower packaging and shipping costs. Three provinces were providing major support to small brewers in 2015. Ontario invested $1.6 million to assist 20 craft breweries in expanding and in marketing. BC announced $10 million in support to their breweries through a 25-percenter reduction Indiana the Provincial Liquor Distribution Board a Euro trademark S markup for local beers. Alberta's new grant program was expected to provide $20 million in assistance to craft brewers. The growth, particularly in sales volume, is particularly noteworthy in Ontario, where craft brewers experienced a 36 percenter increase in sales Indiana 2015. In mid-2016, there were 140 such breweries operating in Ontario. British Columbia's craft beer industry has also experienced major growth from 54 in 2010 to 118 such operations in 2015. These small BC breweries benefited from a 35% increase in the volume of beer produced in 2016 versus 2015. On a Canada-wide basis, demand for craft beer is steadily increasing and the maturity point for this industry is still a long way off. According to TAPS magazine, published by the parent of the Canadian Brewing Awards, there is no consistent definition of craft brewery or microbrewery across Canada. In fact, the various provincial governments only define categories such as small brewery, microbrewery, macrobrewery, and nanobrewery with each classification depending on the number of hectoliters produced and that number varies from province to province. Still, most of the craft brewers tend to be small and locally owned, often by families. Some such breweries have been sold to major corporations but they are still referred to as craft brewers by most news media, after such a change in ownership, however they may no longer qualify as members of the provincial craft brewers associations. The first modern Canadian craft brewer was Horseshoe Bay Brewing, founded in Vancouver in 1982. This was followed by many others, including Spinnaker's Brew Pub in Victoria, Vancouver Island Brewery in Victoria, Granville Island Brewing of Vancouver, Brick Brewery of Waterloo, Granite Brewery of Halifax, Wellington Brewery of Guelph, Big Rock Brewery of Calgary, Upper Canada Brewing Company of Toronto, McCoslin Brewing of Montreal and Steam Whistle Brewing of Toronto. Microbreweries and brew pubs have continued to expand since. Craft beer sales are increasing. In Ontario for example, there was minimal increase in sales volume for the major's products while craft beer sales increased by nearly 36% in 2015. Packaging One way the foreign-owned macrobreweries have dealt with the threat of this slow but steady growth of domestic brewers is by buying them outright. For example, Creamore Springs of Creamore Ontario was bought by Molson Coors in 2005, and Creamore subsequently acquired Granville Island Brewing in 2010. Mill St. of Toronto, Ontario was purchased by Labatt in late 2015, after the acquisition had been completed, Mill St. purchased Brickworks Cider House and brought it under the Labatt umbrella of companies as well. In October 2015, Labatt had also purchased Turning Point Brewery, a craft beer maker in Delta, BC that brews Stanley Park beers. Other craft beers owned by major companies include Hop City owned by Moosehead, Creamore Springs owned by Malsons, 
Unibrewe owned by Sleeman Brewery, Upper Canada Brewing Company owned by Sleeman. The annual Canadian Brewing Awards recognizes the best beers in Canada using blind taste tests. Most of the winners are craft beers. However, some were made by larger brewers, these included Mooseheads Alpine Lager and Cracked Canoe, and Malson Coors Ricker da Euro Trademark S Red Session Lager and Ricker da Euro Trademark S Radler, Labatt's Bud Light and IPA from Alexander Keith's Brewery. For the 2017 competition, New rules allow for entries only from fully Canadian-owned breweries for the 55 categories of beer. Jason Foster, a beer columnist for CBC Radio 1's Radio Active and VU Weekly and the creator of OnBeer.org, argues that Canadian regional styles of craft brewing reflect the history and culture of those regions, often based on the origins of the people who settled there. He argues, for example, that Atlantic Canada is associated with the British styles and Quebec with Belgian styles due to their settlement history. Ontario has a more mainstream, conservative style a Euro with German and Eastern American influences. British Columbia has an eccentric style, influenced by the U.S. West Coast with the noted presence of fruit beers and organic beers drawing from that region's culture of environmentalism. However, it makes little sense to say that Canadian beer is merely the sum of its parts, or takes all of its influence from other styles. Brands like Malson Export, Moosehead, and Sleeman, for example, led the way in crafting a softer and more palatable style of ale and lager for North American audiences, while still retaining strength. For example, Canadian-style ales, pale or dark, tend to be maltier than their American equivalents and more bitter than their English cousins. While taste is subjective, an overview of beer enthusiasts' favorite Canadian beers is a good way to get a sense of the most highly regarded breweries in the country. According to Beer Advocate, a ratings website frequented by beer enthusiasts, as of 2012 46 of Canada's top 100 beers were brewed in Quebec, 25 in British Columbia, 13 in Ontario, 6 in Alberta, 4 in Manitoba, 4 in Nova Scotia, and 2 in Yukon. Moosehead Breweries Limited is Canada's oldest independent brewery, located in St. John, New Brunswick. The brewery was founded in 1867 and is still privately owned and operated by the Olland family. All four of the top 100 beer advocate Canadian beers brewed in Atlantic Canada are brewed in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Three of these are made by Propeller, and one by Garrison. By 2017, there were at least 41 microbreweries throughout Nova Scotia alone. That year, there were also 25 hop growers in the Maritime Provinces and they were producing some 25 varieties of hops. 46 of the top 100 beers in Canada are brewed in Quebec, according to Beer Advocate. The ratings are led by Dieu du Seal of Montreal, and followed by Unibrué of Chambly, Microbrasserie Charlevoix of Bay saint paul Les Trois Mousquetaires of Brassard, Macaslin Brewing of Montreal, and L.E. True du Diable of Shawinigan, L.A.M.A. Rie Boyer of Montreal, Brassers Illimita Copyright S. of St. Eustache, and Hopfen Stark of L'Assomption, with one each. The Mondial de la B.I.A. Rie was founded in 1994 in Montreal and attracts around 80,000 people, while Quebec City held its first beer festival, the Festibiere in 2010. In media Including the major's production plants, 
there were roughly 188 breweries in this province in 2016. Of beers brewed in Canada, 13 of the 100 top-ranked beers were brewed in Ontario in 2011, according to user-submitted ratings on the website Beer Advocate. Black Oak of Etobicoke brews three of these, followed by Denison's of Toronto, Muskoka Cottage Brewery of Bracebridge, and Wellington of Guelph with two apiece. Flying Monkeys of Barry, Spearhead of Etobicoke, Creamore Springs of Creamore, and Great Lakes of Etobicoke brew one top beer apiece. About 80% of Ontario's consumer beer trade is handled by the beer store a government-instituted, privately-owned monopoly founded in 1927 as Brewers Retail. The chain is owned by Anheuser-Busch InBev, Malson Coors, and Sapporo. This unique situation has enabled these companies to earn an estimated $1 billion in profit per year. The other 20% is handled by the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, a crown corporation. Smaller brewers, which tend to focus on German and English styles, are represented by the Ontario Craft Brewers Trade Association. The beer store's share will decrease over time. In December 2016, some 60 supermarkets were given a license to sell six packs and this is expected to increase to over 150 such locations during 2017. The Kitchener-Waterloo Oktoberfest is a nine-day event in Kitchener-Waterloo, which started in 1969 influenced by the original German Oktoberfest. It is held every October, starting on the Friday before Canadian Thanksgiving and running until the Saturday after. The event has had an exclusive sponsorship agreement with Malson Coors for some years. Since craft brewers cannot participate, the Waterloo Wellington Craft Collective started their own Kitchener Waterloo event, Craftoberfest, in 2016, serving beers from over 20 small, independent brewers. Toronto's Festival of Beer was first held in 1995 at Fort York, Indiana, Toronto though has been held at Exhibition Place since 2009. In 2011, the Toronto Festival of Beer also launched the Queer Beer Festival, a separate one-day event marketed toward Toronto's lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community. There is also the Lauder Beer Festival, which is a much smaller festival held in the north end of Toronto. A beer festival also took place in Ottawa in 2003. Bo's All Natural Brewing Company, located in Van Cleek Hill, is the host company of Oktoberfest in the Ottawa area. The 2011 edition was a sellout, drawing an estimated 8,500 to 9,000 guests over the course of three days. The Golden Tap Awards is an annual beer awards event held in Toronto. The awards are sponsored and presented by The Bar Towel, a website and forum dedicated to the discussion and promotion of Toronto's craft and microbrew beer scene. In 2010, the Ontario Craft Brewers the Association of Small, Local, Independently owned craft breweries started Ontario Craft Beer Week, a week-long craft beer celebration across the province. This event gets funding from the Government of Ontario. New microbreweries established in the 2010s have included All OR Nothing Brewhouse in Oshawa, Barnstormer Brewing Company in Barrie, Bellwoods Brewery in Toronto, Left Field Brewery in Toronto, Refined Fool Brewing Co. in Sarnia, Stack Brewing in Sudbury, Outspoken Brewing in Salt Ste. Marie and Sleeping Giant Brewing in Thunder Bay. Craft beer sales are increasing in Ontario. In 2015 for example, 
there was minimal increase in sales volume for the major's products while craft beer sales increased by nearly 36% in that year. The provincial government is helping small breweries to expand. For example, in January 2017, it announced a $562,000 funding program. The recipients included Boa Euro Trademark S, Bellwoods, Hockley Valley, Halliburton Highlands, Oast House, Toboggan Brewing, Stonemer, and Wellington. Of the Beer Advocate Top 100 Canadian Beers, four brews each are made by Half Pints of Winnipeg and Alicot of Edmonton, and one by Wild Rose of Calgary. Great Western Brewing Company and Paddock Wood is based in Saskatoon. Alberta is the only jurisdiction in Canada which has completely privatized the beer retail, import, and warehousing industries. Alberta has also opened, as of 2013, Olds College Brewery, which hosts the Olds College Brewmaster and Brewery Operations Management course the second of its kind in Canada. Alberta has been host to several microbreweries, including Big Rock founded 1985, Alicot and Wildrose both founded 1996, and a plethora of brewpubs, microbreweries, and smaller craft breweries opened since. Calgary is home to a majority of the breweries in Alberta. It boasts large revenue-generating marketing powerhouses like Big Rock and Minnis Brewery, while also having several enthusiastic mid-sized craft breweries like Tool Shed, Village Brewery, and exciting new smaller brewers like Last Best and Calgary's only Nano Brewery, the Dandy Brewing Company. The opening of the Olds College Brewmaster program means that a large number of domestically trained brewers will be added to Canada's brewing industry. Beer styles commonly brewed in the prairies include approachable and sessionable types slash styles such as lagers, blondes, pale ales, and ambers, IPAs, malt-forward beers including porters and stouts as well as many filtered and unfiltered fruited or standard wheat beers. The British Columbia craft beer industry has seen major growth since 2010 when there were 54 small breweries, by 2015 there were 118 such operations. Victoria and Vancouver are the two most dense areas in which breweries can be found with additional breweries opening every year. The over 100 small BC breweries benefited from a 35% increase in the volume of beer produced in 2016 versus 2015. In 2013 the BC Beer Awards recognized the top craft beer to be produced in the province and adorned top breweries such as Central City, Steamworks, Phillips, Townsite, Fernie, Lighthouse, High Mountain, Yale Town, Coal Harbor, and Vancouver Island with gold medals for their beers in a broad range of categories. The rapid growth of the BC beer industry resembles that of Portland or more than a decade ago and the rapid growth is helping to spur on local social economies as well as grow the tourism opportunities around craft beer. 25 of the top 100 beers in Canada are brewed in British Columbia according to Beer Advocate. Driftwood Brewing of Victoria leads with 9 followed by Central City Brewers and Distillers of Surrey and Phillips Brewing and Malting Co. of Victoria with four each, How Sound Brewing of Squamish, and Crana Superscript 3G Ales of Sorrento, Old Yale Brewing Co. of Chilliwack, Russell Brewing Company of Surrey, Tree Brewing Co. of Kelowna, Lighthouse Brewing Company of Victoria, and Spinnaker's Brew Pub of Victoria, with one apiece. The Great Canadian Beer Festival has, since 1993, focused on cask ales from the Pacific Northwest. Since 2003 the festival has been held at Royal Athletic Park on the first weekend after Labor Day. 
the festival attracts over 40 craft breweries from across Canada and the Pacific Northwestern USA and more than 8,000 visitors. In 2010, a group of craft beer enthusiasts started Vancouver Craft Beer Week, the first beer week type festival in Canada, a format that was begun in Philadelphia in 2008. The event has grown significantly since its inception. In 2016, over 100 breweries presented over 350 beers at VCBW, held at the Pine Fairgrounds. The 10-day 2017 event expects a similar number of breweries, plus four stages with live music and DJs, food trucks, market stalls, brewing demonstrations, a games area and other attractions. The event was the winner of the 2016 Golden Owl Hospitality Awards Social Event of the Year, the Georgia Strata Euro Trademark S 2015 and 2016 Golden Plate Award for Best Beer Festival Slash Event, and is a six-time Camera YVR Event of the Year Award winner. Draft beer in Canada, when advertised as a pint, is legally required to be 568 ml. With the allowed margin of error of 0.5 fluid ounces, a pint which is less than 554 ml of beer is an offence, though, to the detriment of consumers, this regulation is often violated and rarely enforced. In several provinces, Draft beer can also be purchased by individuals in kegs. In Ontario, for example, the beer store offers 70 different brands in three keg sizes, 20 litres, 30 litres and 58.6 litres. Prior to 1961, Canadian beer was sold, and served, in two sizes, colloquially known as quarts and pints or large and small. They were 22 and 12 imperial fluid ounces, respectively, whereas a true imperial quart was 40 fluid ounces. Over the years, some provinces banned the sale of beer in the larger bottle. For example, in Ontario in the 1950s only the pint could be sold, but in Quebec both sizes were about equally common. In 1961, both sizes were replaced, nationwide, by the standardized bottle, equal in volume to the small and affectionately known as the stubby. Some years later however, Ontario began to allow the sale of tall boy cans containing 740 ml of beer. Over 50% of beer in Canada is now sold in cans. Even some craft brewers' products, including those Camerona Euro Trademark S Brewing Company in Mississauga, Ontario, and Ottawa Euro Trademark S Beyond the Pale Brewing Co., sell the majority of their beer in cans. Stubbies are a type of bottle which is shorter and with a slightly larger diameter than the now predominant long neck bottle. Starting in 1962 almost all beer in Canada was sold in stubbies until the beer companies chose to switch to the American-style long-neck bottle, between 1982 and 1986. The last major label to be available in the stubby was Labatt's Crystal which switched to the long-neck in the summer of 1986. Brick Brewery of Waterloo began selling red cap ale in stubbies as recently as the mid-2000s, although this may no longer be the case. At least a few craft breweries also use this bottle format. <laughs>